It's Stepney's birthday, 146 years old. Dermatologists hate him. It's been more than two years since I made this video. So you know what that means. Here's a continued history of Stepney the Bluebell engine. The loco has been sitting in the steamworks at Sheffield Park, waiting for the pandemic to pass. Moving on, I promised I'd talk about the bundle of Terrier models that I have or have had, so let's do that. Now that there's two new highly detailed models on the market, the old Hornby Dapol tooling ones have become less favoured, but cheaper and easier to find. So here's some modifications I've done to mine that you may want to do as well, as a cheaper alternative to the newer ones. My first Terrier was not actually Stepney, shockingly, but no matter what engine it is, there are some quick paint touch-ups you can do to correct the factory defaults. I've painted the safety valves and whistles on mine in a brass colour, and the handrails on the cab sides could be painted in a polished silver. If you want it to be an extra polished engine, then you could also do this to the handrails on the boiler and the smoke box door, as well as on the hinges if you really want to be fancy. To show that it's a hard working engine, paint the buffers in silver or grey as well. Then dab a patch of black paint to show where they've been pressed together. A finer detail is to carefully paint the rims of the wheels in black, because in service the wheels would never be that clean. But you still want to keep the bare metal on the bottom of the wheels so that it keeps connectivity with the rails. Weathering the model is of course a great way to hide or to show off detail, but for the Terriers specifically, because they had such small bunkers, sometimes the crew would pile extra coal on top of the cab roof. So, particularly on the later era models, it would be good to make the roofs absolutely filthy or scattered with loose bits of coal. Even though they were originally fitted with toolboxes on the back, often tools such as buckets and fire irons would be kept on top of the tanks, making a very cluttered look. Many LBSCR engines tended to have very tall lamp irons, these are easier to model, but also easier to break. You can buy etched lamp irons from certain companies, or you can use the corner of a staple, cut and painted, for a cheaper way to make different head codes. My second ever terrier was a Hornby Thomas Stepney, which had I known would be so rare in the future, I may not have done what I did to it. Either way, this was 2014 and I was just getting into modelling, so maybe I can be excused for painting it? Maybe? It wasn't primed or anything, I just straight up painted it, using the existing lining as guidance. That's why it says Steppy on one side. This was done with Phoenix Precision's improved engine green, which I thought was a shade too dark, but according to Killian, is actually based on a genuine Brighton Works paint extract. The more you know. I painted the running board black, and the handrails and buffers white to look more like the TV series Stepney. Even though, yes, they're silver. Oh well. Difficult to see, but the cab is removable as one piece, and there are some basic controls already moulded which you can paint. The regulator and reverser handles particularly stand out, as they were mostly painted red. I fitted a little chain to the couplings and sprinkled real coal dust on the plastic coal load. It took many, many, many attempts with a craft blade to remove the face, the battle scars serving as a reminder of the struggles. Only on the day I finished my newer model of Stepney did the face just slip off, just like that, like it was passing on the torch. Symbolic, but really annoying at the time. My newer Stepney isn't actually Stepney, it's Piccadilly, which was modified in 2017. It's pretty much acted as my channel icon since then, and is very possibly the most well-travelled Hornby Terrier, which I suppose isn't a difficult title to hold. These older terriers date back to the dapple toolings from the 1980s, and they're a mixed match of parts from both the original Stroudy class and the Marsh rebuilds. I wanted to properly A1Xify this one to make it like a 60s slash TV series style step. The first step was to carefully cut the sandboxes with a craft blade, and then use card and milliput to fill in the gap around the wheel arches and the smoke box. I removed the Westinghouse brake pump and filled in the holes for that too. With the filler caps on top, Stepneys sit perfectly central with the tanks, rather than in line with the dome, so I cut a piece behind them and moved those back. I also added a bit of card to show where the condensing pipes were once fitted to the front of the tanks, as well as on the front of the running board to show where the new sandbox lids were. The thing I regret the most about this model is the name and the number. 
There wasn't anywhere to get 60s styled bluebell fonts transfers. And even now I'm looking to get some, so if anyone knows anywhere, please I just want to turn the new Brighton Works into Stepney. So what I did instead was print a photo of the name and the numbers and just stuck them on the side. Job done. My thinking was that the paint I was using would be thick enough to hide over the raised edges around the paper. But as you can see, it didn't work that well. Technically, I could peel off the paper, strip the paint and try again, but I'd want to redo it with transfers if I ever did. Please, someone. The inside of the cab was painted in a yellow beige, and I'd add the driver's name if I could paint that small, but I can't. It's not accurate, but I'm still quite fond of the paint I chose for the livery, and I think it makes my model stand out a lot more on camera. It's not actually improved engine green, but M and GNR gorse yellow used for lining. I may get etched plates in future, but little dots of brass and blue paint on the wheel arches represent the builder's plates. On the running board, little white splodges mark where the real thing has the shed allocation. On my original Stepney, I painted the tops of the safety valves in red, as that's what they were on the real thing previously. But when Stepney was repainted in 2015, they were in blue, so I did the same. As my miniature mascot, this little guy has more than served his purpose, and it's sentimentally one of my favourites. That's an A1X Terrier, however. Now let's look at an older A1 version. Not long after finishing Stepney, Terrier 672 Fenchurch asked if he could have a model of Fenchurch for some reason, using a BR Black model. With very thin card, I drew and cut the shape of the very distinctive wing plates on the smoke box, leaving room for the original door or a new smaller one to be fitted in future. The oil pots were made from fence post spares from a plastic card kit, but any small spherical object would do. I used LBSCR Marsh Umber for the main paint with a darker brown border before carefully hand painting the white lining in between using a fine brush and a toothpick. Lines that were too thick were corrected with the umber again. This isn't the most sophisticated way of painting, but it did what I needed at the time. I wrote the name on paper first to get the spacing correct, before carefully adding this with brass paint, as on the real thing they used gold leaf to write it. The same was then done for the numbers on the buffer beams, and black outlining on the right and undersides helped to define it, but you can definitely tell that it was handwritten. Again, this could use a repaint with transfers in future. The models usually come with a little extra bag of detail parts, and I used the condenser pipes provided to go between the tanks and the smoke box. Harry then added etched number and works plates from Narrow Planet, and a face for when it acts as his own channel mascot. Now for a model that I haven't revealed before, so get ready, but I made it in 2019, so it's hardly new, and it's one that I'll explain a bit more about in times to come. For now, it remains a mystery, but all you need to know is it's a custom 240 Terrier. In the early 1900s, two Terriers had their front driving wheels removed and their cylinders made smaller to be more economical whilst on one coach motor trains in the countryside. They were eventually rebuilt back, but it's something that's not modelled too often. Doing something I didn't have the tools to do on Fenchurch, I sawed the metal sandboxes on the chassis to revert it back to A1 form, then painted the entire underframe in red. The same method from Fenchurch was used to adapt the smoke box, and the same paint used on Stepney, finished with a brass dome just for the fun of it. The front driving wheel was easily removed, and using spares I cut the coupling rods to just connect four wheels. So that it didn't cause a short circuit, I've used plastic wheels from a wagon but would like to get insulated metal ones in future so that the front pickups can still be used. Obviously, using smaller wheels, there's a change in height, so a small strip of plastic card on the chassis acts as a spring to keep the axle in contact with the rails. It's not the best system in the world, and sometimes the wheel isn't pressed down enough so it doesn't spin. But then again, the chassis does now have to cater for two different wheel sizes. You'll see more of this model in future, but as of now, that's all the modifications I've done to these models. As you can tell, I don't get too drastic with the weathering and things like that, but I'm just not very confident. 
There are others out there who have done some really impressive modifications to these models, and you can read all about them on RM Web and other modelling sites, and I definitely recommend you check them out to see what else you could do. Terriers were adapted to so many different forms, so the possibilities are endless. In future, I'd like to have a go at making an Isle of Wight style bunker, but my more urgent priority is to make a good preserved Stepney out of the newer tooling since Hornby and Rails of Sheffield haven't done the honours yet. Before we end, on the topic of modelling terriers, I just wanted to share two rather unique models. D0280 Falcon made this little metal terrier for me a few months ago, and honestly, I just find it so impressive that you can cut and solder metal on such a small scale. Like, it's even got little lamp irons and the wing plates on the smoke box, and it's, this is just amazing. If I get a chassis for it at some point, um, I might give it some wheels, but for now, I just like the shiny look of it and might keep it unpainted. So, a very big thank you again. Also earlier this year, I picked up this huge ceramic Stepney money box which was addressed to both me and the Bluebell Railway. I tried to get in contact to say thank you on behalf of me and the railway, and we took a photo of it with the real Stepney, but I'm not sure if the email ever went through. So, Jonah, if you're watching, thank you very much, and it was very thoughtful of you to make something to perhaps raise funds for a future overhaul or something. And honestly, I have no idea how you've managed to capture the look of TV series Stepney with such a difficult to work with material, so you've done a great job. Thank you. Just as a note to anyone in future, I don't have a post box or anything like those big fancy YouTubers who make unboxing videos and such. But despite what it seems, I also don't live at the Bluebell Railway either, so I wouldn't like them to keep receiving parcels on my behalf unless previously agreed with someone. You're more than welcome to share artwork online, or anything like that, and it's super sweet if you do. But yes, I don't want to use the railway as my personal mailbox, because I'm just a volunteer there. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and of course, Happy Birthday Stepney! You smiling piece of metal, you. Aww. Thank you to all of my brilliant patrons. Alex Goodman, GB H Train, Donald 9 and Douglas 10, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Kildane's Coven, Nat, Sam Bennett, Alco, and Henry Forrester.